Welcome back. Just a couple weeks ago, it seems, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan and the Democrats who control the state assembly were celebrating their ability to come together on a budget outline. But that was then. Hogan today is blasting lawmakers for failing to heed the message voters sent when they elected him in November. Brad Bell with us now from Annapolis where lawmakers are headed home, but the questions linger. Brad, tell us what has the governor feeling somewhat angry about how things have played out. Well, you know what? The governor came down here. He said he wanted to put an end to 40 straight consecutive tax hikes, and he says he's done that. He's happy about that. He was asked a couple of times what made him least happy, and he kept bringing up a particular bill. You know, he wanted to give tax credits to those who wanted to donate private funds to schools, private and public across the state. That didn't go anywhere. He said that was perhaps his biggest surprise and among his biggest disappointments here at the legislative session. People of Maryland made it clear last year that the same old path of more spending, more taxes, and politics as usual was not acceptable. And uh, that's something that I won't forget. And while I have a number of concerns with the General Assembly's actions on the budget, we ended the session on a high note by reining in spending, cutting taxes, providing record investment in education, and changing the trajectory of the state. And we did it all <clears throat> with support from both parties. Well, so there you heard the governor's wrap-up, essentially, of what went on during the legislative session. He said he had a, su a successful legislative session, his first. You know, he says that the nature of compromise is that nobody seems entirely happy. He's not entirely happy. I told you why. The legislature's not entirely happy because they wanted more money. One of the big things hanging out there is this so-called GCEI, the Geographic Cost of Education Index. Basically, it's supplemental funds for those places where it's more expensive to educate children in the public schools. And, of course, those places are our places in the D.C. area, Montgomery and Prince George's County Schools. And, you know, there's some money out there. Governor doesn't have to spend it. It remains to be seen what he's going to do. The legislature pushed through an effort last night to make that funding mandatory in the years ahead. The governor says they're not sure that's entirely legal. So the battle continues. But what the governor is saying was his big success was changing the tone down here. I got to tell you, I think I agree with him. You know, we had a lot of tax and fee increases over the last eight years, the O'Malley term. The governor said there's zero new taxes, zero new fees after this legislative session. He has, in fact, changed the tone down here in Annapolis. People paid attention to the fact that he was elected by making very, very simple promises. We remember he didn't say anything except that he was going to rein in spending across the state and he was going to do something about what he called the 40 consecutive tax hikes of the O'Malley administration. Now, he says the legislative session is over. This has just been a small part of his job. He's going to spend the rest of the year trying to save money in the agencies that he controls and trying to boost economic development across the state, things that he doesn't necessarily need legislative approval right. to do. Bruce? Uh, so, Brad, as you know, you've covered Annapolis for so long, and, and you know the place so well. You've covered a lot of different governors over the, over the, over the uh, course of time. Yeah. Uh, uh, so <laughs> normally, the, so the legislature, uh, unless they come back in special session, which is rare, but occasionally does happen, this is basically it for the Maryland General Assembly. They meet for 90 days, starting in January, ending in April, and when they go home, there's this general sense that we have a, a broad outline for the next, the next fiscal year, the high profile pieces of legislation, things of this nature. But you, you've already alluded to something that I think is really the headline coming out of today. And the Washington Post, maybe, uh, you know, in some contrast with the, the governor's uh, take on all this, he says, Maryland uh, Assembly budget widens rift with Hogan, lawmakers pass spending plan, but GOP governor says he won't release some funds. So. Can you, can you kind of take us to the next step in all this? To what extent is there ambiguity about very crucial funds? When you talk about the, the high cost of living counties like Montgomery and Prince George's, the education aid that I, we know that leaders are expecting, and the, the, uh, the unresolved issue, it's, it would appear, about worker pay. I mean, what happens when the assembly allocates money and the governor says, I have fiscal concerns about the years to come and I'm not going to spend the money? 
Yeah, well, he doesn't have to. Uh, that's the thing. He does not have to spend the money. Uh, you know, we're going to see. We're going to see. We got Rush and Baker on the phone from oh, Prince right. George's County. I know my friend Mr. Baker is going to be twisting some arms, trying to make sure that that money gets spent in Prince George's County. Governor Hogan does have to work with people around the state. There are things that he wants, and there are things that people out there in positions of influence can provide. It's a negotiating process. It's politics. It's always ugly. Let me bring in a lot in of the, people are chuckling about this idea. Hey, Brad, let me bring in the executive, and I appreciate the reminder of Richard Baker joining us uh, from Annapolis. Mr. Executive, weigh in. Are you, what's your reaction to how things played out? Well, I, I think uh, I agree with Brad on the last part, and that is, you know, uh, for us, the geographic index, uh, that's $20 million for public education in Prince George's County. Um, while I understand, you know, the legislature you know, doesn't have a printing press, neither do we at the local level. So either we make up the difference or the state chips in, which is one of their responsibilities. And so we'll be leaning hard on the governor uh, to do that. I, I do commend the legislative body for putting the money in the budget. Um, it was a weird, I mean, it was a weird session for somebody who served in the General Assembly. I don't know that I've seen the budget process work out the way it has uh, in this session. Um, I do think, you know, the governor got some things that he wanted, and but the legislative body made it uh, perfectly clear that there were things that were important to uh, good governance and, and quality of life, like education, like the hospital for us. I have exactly two minutes. I warn you both, I have exactly two minutes left. Brad, did you have a question for uh, Mr. Baker? Well, you know, you, you said there's going to be some arm twisting. You're going to lean on him. Um, you know, how do you see that process going? And the governor just says a lot of these things, the money just doesn't exist. And, you know, this is not your, your area, but the state pay raise that was promised by uh, uh, Governor O'Malley, Governor Hogan says, well, we just don't know where we're going to come up with the money. The GCEI is different. I guess that money is there. Uh, how do you get it out of them? Well, uh, I think you just said uh, the money for the GCEI is there. Uh, it's in the budget. Uh, the governor funded half of it when, uh, in the original budget, we're going to ask for the rest. And the same thing with our hospital. There's $15 million of ongoing uh, revenues to keep the hospital going. That money is there. So we're going to go to the governor and say this is good for the, one of the largest jurisdictions in the state that you govern, and um, we would like you to spend that money the way that the uh, legislature allocated because we're making good use of it. It is investing in the quality of life in the state. Brad, we have about 30 seconds left. Uh, anything uh, additional you can pass along? You, you were there. You got the feel of the governor's mood. Uh, your expectation for the next couple of weeks? You know, a lot of this stuff, to, to me, this business about the acrimony, this is a Republican governor in a state that's dominated by a Democratic legislature and by very, power, very powerful politicians like Mr. Baker, Democratic politicians. Not everybody's going to get along. They're not mm -hmm. going to agree on everything. That's a fact. Um, I think Hogan has succeeded, Governor Hogan has succeeded in changing the tone of the discussion down here in Annapolis, where they have sort of reined things in and yeah. with the sense that the people have spoken. Now he's got a lot of work to do to be a successful governor. As he said, the legislature is really in the budget. It's a big part of and it, but it's only part of what he's got to do. And it's now year one. he's got and to it, get jobs. And it's year one of a four-year. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see how it all plays out. Brad yeah. Bell, County Executive Baker, thank you both very much. Back with more right after this.